Shalom, Shalom, Yasharala. This is your brother Manatazak from Nation of Kings and Priests. Here's another Bible bite for you. So the question today is, do you love your family more than God? In other words, do you love them more than serving the Most High? Would you make sacrifices for the, for the Most High? So what we're going to do is we're going to start with a certain precept. We're going to go into the Apocrypha and we're going to look at a story that is very powerful, right? It should motivate us to do the right thing, right? So we're going to start with a certain precept and then we're going to move into the Apocrypha. But before we go on, if you could please push the thumbs up, like the video audio. If you like, share the video audio to help spread the word, right? So... We're going to start it out, we're going to say give all blessings, all praise, and all honor and glory to Yahweh in the name of his son, Hamashiach Yahawashai, our king and our redeemer, right? So now, we're going to start out with this precept in Matthew where Christ, Yahawashai, is talking. So it's red letter, Matthew 10, verse 37, and it says... He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. If you love anyone more than the Most High or his son, then you're not worthy of him or the kingdom. Let's go on to verse 38. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me, is not worthy of me. 39. He that findeth his life shall lose it, and he that loses his life for my sake shall find it. So if you lose your life for Christ's sake, for kingdom work, following these laws, statutes, and commandments, you will be sealed into the kingdom and into eternal life. But if you don't do that, you will lose all of that. So we're going to go through some examples of this. But one mighty example. Right? And we're going to go into it in the Apocrypha. And this is a pretty long chapter. Right? We're going to be in 2 Maccabees. Chapter 7. Like I said, it's a long chapter. We got a lot of precepts to cover. I'm going to try not to go too fast. But I don't want to go too slow on this But we're going to try to get all the meat off of this Alright So this is going to happen during the time of King Antiochus the fourth. Alright So here we go Chapter 7 We'll start at verse 1 It came to pass also That seven brethren with their mother were taken And compelled by the king against the law To taste swine's flesh for you that don't know what swine is, swine is pig or pork, all right? So the king was trying to pressure them into tasting and putting this pork in their mouth, right? So we're going to start it again. It came to pass also that seven brethren with their mother were taken and compelled by the king against the law, that's God's law, to taste swine's flesh, and were tormented with scourges and whips. Right? So let's go on. Verse 2. But one of them that spake first said, What wouldest thou ask or learn of us? We are ready to die rather than to transgress the laws of our fathers. You see that? This brother right here loves the Most High more. Then he loves his own life And that's what we have to We have to love the Lord that much That we're willing to give up our lives And family members lives For this thing It's the only way we're going to get sealed into this So let's go We're going to jump around to Let's go to Deuteronomy Chapter 14 Right Verse 8 And it says and this is actually a law, right, for all Israelites 
all Hebrews were supposed to follow these laws. These are the commandments of the Most High. This is why they're refusing to put that pig in their mouth. Watch this. It says, And the swine, because it divideth the hoof, yet cheweth not the cud, it is unclean unto you. Ye shall not eat of their flesh, nor touch their dead carcass. If you're an Israelite, you should not be eating pork. We have dietary laws concerning this, right? Let's go even further on this. We're gonna go to, let's go to Isaiah. We're gonna go to Isaiah chapter, in fact, let's do Isaiah 65 verse four. We're going to look it up in the NLT And it says At night they go out among the graves Worshipping the dead They eat the flesh of pigs And make stews with other forbidden foods You see that? The prophet Isaiah is telling you The Most High is not happy about this Right? Verse 5 This is the Most High talking It says These people are a stench in my nostrils an acrid smell that never goes away acrid smell that's a smell that is so bad that your eyes water up and your sinuses burn when you see it and smell it that's how bad it is and that's how the most high feels about people who eat swine's flesh right we're gonna go to isaiah 66 verse let me see here 15 through 17 we're going to continue on this remember Isaiah is a prophet so right here this is an end time prophecy concerning when the most high when Yahawashai when Christ comes back right what's going to happen to people in that day if he catches you eating pig watch this for behold the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire we know this hasn't happened yet so this is coming verse 16 for by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh and the slain of the Lord shall be many verse 17 they that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the mist, eating swine's flesh, and the abomination and the mouse shall be consumed together, saith the Lord. You see that? The Most High is going to destroy and kill anyone eating these abominable foods that are against our dietary laws. Christ is going to destroy you when he arrives. There ain't going to be no person of the Hebrew Israelite community entering into the kingdom eating swine's flesh, crabs, shrimp, lobster. It's not going to happen. The Most High will destroy you in that day if he doesn't destroy you before that day. So now, let's go back to the Apocrypha, right? And we're going to go to... Remember we, what we just read in these scriptures about how the Most High feels about swine's flesh. Now you're gonna, that's why you understand why they're refusing to put this in their mouth. Right? So let me reread verse 2 in, in Maccabees chapter 7. It says, But one of them that spake first said, What would if thou ask or learn of us? We are ready to die rather than to transgress the laws of our fathers. That's how we need to be, Yasharala. We need to be this committed. Verse 3. Then the king, being in rage, commanded pans and cauldrons to be made hot. These pans and cauldrons, these are the big ones when you're going to make a food for a large amount of people. Watch what he does. He makes these things really hot. Watch verse 4. 
which forwith being heated, he commanded to cut out the tongue of him that spake first, and to cut off the utmost parts of his body, the rest of his brethren and his mother looking on. You see that? His mother and his brothers are there watching this. Right? Now watch this. Verse 5. Now when he was thus maimed in all his members, he commanded him being yet alive to be brought to the fire and to be fried in the pan. And as the vapor of the pan was for good space dispersed, they exhorted. Exhorted means encouraged. They encouraged one another with the mother to die manfully, saying thus. Now, you see that? They didn't, they didn't fear this man or death more than they feared the Most High. They would rather die and die loyally, right? You know what? Let's go to um let's go to Matthew. I believe it's Matthew 24. Alright, give me one moment. Matthew 24. 24 verse 13. Right? Let me see. 24 verse 13. This is red letter, so this is Christ talking. And this is what he says. It says, But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. You see that? We have to endure to the end to be saved. Let's get another one in Matthew. I believe it's in Matthew chapter... I think it's 10. One moment. Matthew 10, verse 20, 28. Red letter. This is Christ, Yahawashai, talking again. And it says, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. But rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. See that? And we know man can only kill the body, but he cannot kill the soul. But the Most High, if you violate his laws, could kill the body and the soul. That's a permanent situation. Right? So, we need to stay loyal. We need to stay on point in this thing. We need to follow, learn these law, statutes, and commandments, have faith in the Most High, and we need to continue in that way. So let's go on to verse 6 in Maccabees chapter 7. It says, The Lord God looketh upon us, and in truth has comfort us, comfort in us, as Moses in his song, which witnessed to their faces, declared, saying, And he shall be comforted in his servants. Right? And let's go on to verse 7. So when the first was dead, after this number, they brought the second to make him a mocking stock. And when they had pulled off the skin of his head with the hair, they asked him, Will thou eat? Before thou be punished throughout every member of the body, of thy body. So now, they've already started torturing this brother, right? And they're asking him now, while they already scalped him, and his head, his, the flesh of his head with his hair is hanging from his scalp. And they're asking him if he's willing to uh, eat this pork and not receive any more of this torture, Right? This, uh, this reminds me of 1 Peter. We're going to go to 1 Peter chapter 5. And I believe we're going at verse 8 and 9. Right? Because this brother is sacrificed. They, these brothers and this mother are sacrificing themselves. Right? And let's see what it says in 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 8 and 9. It says, 
Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom resist set steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. You see that? We're expected to make ourselves a living sacrifice to the Most High and endure these tribulations, these tortures. This is picking up our torture state, right? And these brothers know that. And they're presenting themselves as a living sacrifice. So, we're going to go back. And we're going to go to, I believe, verse 8. And it says, But he answered in his own language. In fact, let's reread verse 7 after we just read that first Peter. And then we'll move to verse 8. It says, so when the first was dead after this number, they brought the second to make him a mocking stock. And when they had pulled off the skin of his head with the hair, they asked him, Will thou eat before thou be punished throughout every member of thy body? But he answered in his own language and said, No. Wherefore he also received the next torment in order as the former did. So because he answered no, he received the same torture that his brother before him received. And as we see in 1 Peter, right, we have to endure this because these devils are out here, right? They're out here looking to devour us, the children of Israel, because we're following the laws of our father. And we have to know that even though we're enduring that we have other brothers that are enduring these same things or similar situations somewhere else, right? So, uh, verse 8, but he answered and said in his own language and said, no, wherefore he also received the next torment in order as the former did. Verse 9, and when he was at the last gasp, he said, thou, like a fury, Take us out of this present life But the king of the world Shall raise us up Who have died for his laws Unto everlasting life You see that? They were convicted in this thing They knew what their reward would be This goes back to Matthew 24, 13 About enduring to the end and he who endures to the end will have everlasting life or will be saved, right? Let's go to verse 10. It says, After him was the third made a mocking stock. And when he was required, he put out his tongue. And that right... Shalak, let me read that again. And after him was the third made a mocking stock. And when he was required... He put out his tongue and that right soon holding forth his hands manfully see that he stuck his tongue out and put his arms out manfully waiting for them to chop it off right so let's go on to verse 11 so verse 11 it says and said courageously these I had from heaven He's talking about his arms and his tongue. He said, these I had from heaven. And for his laws, I despise them. So for God's laws, he will despise his own body parts. Right? And from him, I hope to receive them again. You see that? He has faith that the Most High is going to restore him whole again. But in the kingdom. Right? Now... Let's go to Deuteronomy. This reminds me of Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5, right? And it says, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul 
and with all thy might. Right? These brothers and this mother are showing that they love the Most High with all their heart, all their soul, and all their might. Because they are not violating these commandments. Even unto death. We ourselves need to take this as an example and prepare ourselves for these days. Because certain days are coming. You may not fry in a pan, but you may be put to death for other things. For violating the, if you don't violate the law. Because that's how they're going to try to get you. They're going to try to get you by violating, making you violate God's laws. Right? So let's go back. We'll start at verse 11. And he said, Courageously, these I have had from heaven, and for his laws I despise them. And from him I hope to receive them again. Verse 12. Insomuch that the king and they that were with him marveled at the young man's courage. For that he nothing regarded the pain. For that he nothing regarded the pain. So he didn't pay attention to the pain. You know. And he didn't fear this pain. And I know it had to be very painful. But he didn't compromise. He kept going. This verse 13. Now when this man was dead. Also, they tormented and mangled the fourth in the like manner. You see that? They moved on to the next brother. And they got, they began torturing him. Verse 14, it says, So when he was ready to die, he said thus, It is good being put to death by men, to look for hope from God, to be raised up again by him, as for thee, Thou shalt have no resurrection to life. You see that? He knows because he's dying loyally that the Most High will reward him with the resurrection to life. But he knows that this king and his people, that they will not be resurrected to life. Right? Let's actually, um, this reminds me of, I believe it's math. Let's go to Matthew. Give me one moment. <coughs> Matthew 18, verse, verse 10. And it says, it's red letter, so Christ is talking. This is Yahweh Shah. It says, Take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you that in heaven, their angels do always behold the face of my Father, which is in heaven. I want to reread this in the NLT version, right? This is Matthew 18.10, again, red letter. It says, beware that you don't look down on any of these little ones. For I tell you that in heaven, their angels are always in the presence of my heavenly Father. What does that mean? That means anything you do to any of these little ones, right? Anything is reported and recorded immediately to the Most High. And the Most High has an option. He can get you right there and then, or he could wait for you a little bit later and get you at a more situ a situation that's more nightmarish to you, right? In fact, and, and this is... When you, when you do something to the least one of these, right, it's, it's even more serious than you think because you're not just attacking that person, right? Look, look what Christ says. We're going to go to Matthew, Matthew 25, verse 40 and 41. Look what he says. And this is red letter. Christ is speaking. It says, And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily, I say unto you, inasmuch as ye done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. See that? Whatever you do to one of these least ones, you're doing it to Christ. Look at verse 41. Then shall he say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire 
prepared for the devil and his angels. You see that? When you do something to the least one of these, the most high's children, you are condemning yourself to death. And that is a permanent situation from the most high because he kills the body and the soul. Remember? So now, let's go back to Baruch, I mean to the book of Mac, 2 Maccabees, chapter 7. Knowing what we just read in Matthew, we're going to reread verse 14. So when he was ready to die, he said thus, it is good being put to death by men to look for hope from God to be raised up again by him. As for thee, which means you, as for you though, shall have no resurrection to life. And as we saw in Matthew, that whoever this is, this king, his people, will have no resurrection at all to life. Right? Let's go to verse 15. Afterward, they brought the fifth also and mangled him. Then looked he unto the king and said, Thou hast power over men. Thou art corruptible. Thou doest what thou wilt. In other words, do what you will. Yet think not that our nation is forsaken of God. So, in other words, don't, he says, do what you will. Right? It's in your hands. But don't think that our nation is forgotten by God. In verse 17, he says, But abide a while, and behold his great power, how he will torment thee and thy seed. So what he's saying is, stick around a while and watch God's power and how he will torment you and your children, right? In fact, um, let's go to, we're going to go to Revelation, right? We're going to go to Revelation chapter 13, verse, I want to say 10. Listen to this. It says, He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. And if we look at this, this brother here, all of them, including their mother, they're patiently waiting for this. They know that this is going to happen. So they're patiently waiting for this. And I just want to reread this really quickly. Um, yeah, let's just move on to verse 15. Let's move on to 15. After, it says, afterwards, they brought the fifth also and mangled him. Shalakia. Shalakia. I lost my spot. We're going to go back down to 17 because that's where we left off at. So it says, But abide a while and behold his great power, how he will torment thee and thy seed. Right? Then verse 18, it says, After him also they brought the sixth, who being ready to die, said, Be not deceived without cause, for we suffer these things for ourselves. Having sinned against our God, therefore marvelous things are done unto us. You see, he's acknowledging the only reason they're going through these things is because they themselves at one time broke the law of the Most High and sinned against him. And this is the punishment, right? But they've repented and they're refusing to break anything, any other laws, especially this with the, with the swine. So let's go on to verse 19. But think not thou that takest in hand to strive against God, that thou shalt escape unpunished. So he's telling him, you're contending with the Most High. Don't think you're going to escape this without being punished. Verse 20. But the mother was marvelous above all and worthy of honorably, honorable memory. For when she saw her seven sons slain with the space of one day, she bare it with a good courage, 
because of the hope that she had in the Lord. See that? She bared it with good courage because of the hope that she had in the Lord. Obviously, this woman knew the laws, the statutes, the commandments. She knew the promises and the prophecies. She taught them to her children. And they were all committed to this. This is, this is basically Revelation 13.10. Where it says again, here is the patience and the faith of the saints. So, you know, we have to be the same way. Alright, so we're going to move on to verse 21. It says, Yea, she exhorted. Yea, so exhorted means encourage. Yea, she encouraged every one of them in her own language, filled with courageous spirits and stirring up her, wo her womanish thoughts with a manly stomach. She said unto them, I cannot tell ye, Shalakia, I cannot tell how ye came into my womb. For I neither gave you breath nor life. Neither was it I that formed the members of every one of you. You see this? This mother is encouraging her children. Because she knows that she will see them again in the kingdom. If they die loyally. If they all commit to themselves to being loyal to the Most High. And the statutes and commandments in these laws. Let's go to verse 23. It says, But doubtless the creator of the world who formed the generation of man and found out the beginning of all things will also of his own mercy give you breath and life again. See that? Give you breath and life again as ye now regard not your own selves for his law's sake. You know what? Let's go to Revelation. We're going to go to Revelation. This is Revelation 22, verse 14. And it says, Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. You see that? These brothers and their mother, dying loyally, will inherit the right to the tree of life in the kingdom. They will enter into those gates at that time. So we need to understand that we also need to, to do these things. We also need to make sure that we go loyally and faithfully. Whatever it is that the tribulation is that the Most High allows upon us. Because each one of us may have certain different things come upon us. Right? So now, we're going to reread verse 23 in 2 Maccabees chapter 7. And then we'll move on. It says, But doubtless the creator of the world who formed the generation of man and found out the beginning of all things will also of his own mercy give you breath and life again. As ye now regard not your own selves for his law's sake. Verse 24. Now, Antiochus, thinking himself despised. Now this is the king. And suspecting it to be a reproachful speech. Whilst the youngest was yet alive. Did not only exhort him by words. So the king is trying to encourage the youngest one, the last one of the sons, but also assured him with oaths that he would make him both a rich and happy man, if he would turn from the laws of his fathers, and that also he would take him for his friend and trust him with the affairs. Do you hear this devil? This devil right here is trying to bribe this young man into betraying the Most High's law, statutes, and commandments, right? By offering him things, right? Listen, this is very similar to what happened to Yahweh when the devil took him up to the mount 
and showed them all the kingdoms of the world and said, hey, I'll give you all of these kingdoms and rulership over them if you just bow down to me one time and worship me, right? So this is, the, this is how the devil works. That's how these devils work. Let's move on to verse 25. It says, but when the young man would in no case hearken unto him, the king called his mother and exhorted her that she would counsel the young man to save his life. And when he had exhorted her with many words, she promised him that she would counsel her son. But she, bowing herself toward him, laughing the cruel tyrant to scorn, spake in her country language on this manner. O oh, my son, have pity upon me that bare thee nine months in my womb, and gave thee suck three years, and nourished thee, and brought thee up unto this age, and endured the troubles of education. You see that? So she's, she's reminding him all of these things. Go to 28. I beseech thee, my son, Look upon the heaven and the earth and all that is therein and consider that God made them of the, of the things, Shalaki, consider that God made them of things that were not. And so was mankind made likewise. Fear not this, fear not this tormentor, but being worthy of thy brethren, take thy death that I may receive thee again in mercy with thy brethren. While she was yet speaking these words, the young man said, Whom wait ye for? In other words, what are we waiting for? I will not obey the king's commandment, but I will obey the commandment of the law that was given unto our fathers by Moses. And thou, that has been the author of all mischief against the Hebrews shall not escape the hands of God. For we suffer because of our sins. And though the living Lord be angry with us a little while for our chastising and correction, yet shall he be at one again with his servants. But thou, O godless man, and of all other most wicked, be not lifted up without a cause, nor puffed up with uncertain hopes, lifting up thy hand against the servants of God. For thou hast not yet escaped the judgment of the Almighty God, who seeth all things. You see that? He's letting this king know, this heathen know, that he is not going to escape this judgment and that the Most High already knows of all the things that he is doing. Remember the precept I showed you where Christ said that the angels, that their angels are in heaven who are face to face with the Most High? So that the Most High is already hearing this and seeing it. So let's go on to verse 36. For our brethren who now have suffered a short pain are dead under God's covenant of everlasting life. You hear that? If we die loyally in this thing, we are in God's covenant of everlasting life. But thou, through the judgment of God, shall receive just punishment for thy pride. Verse 37. But I... As my brethren offer up my body and life for the laws of our fathers. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. I got to get another precept on this. Right? Did you hear what he just said? But I, as my brethren, offer up my body and life for the laws of our fathers. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to Romans chapter 12. We're going to read verse 1 and 2. Watch this. Romans 12, verse 1 and 2. And it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, 
by the mercies of God that, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You see that? We are commanded and we are expected to, we are expected to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. We are expected to endure to the end, even if that end means our lives being taken. Look at this sister. She just lost seven sons and courageously exhorted and encouraged each one to die loyally, manfully. There are brothers out there that aren't as brave as this woman. Let's go on. We're going to continue reading verse 37, 2 Maccabees chapter 7. And it says, But I, as my brethren, offer up my body and life for the laws of our fathers, beseeching God that he would speedily be merciful unto our nation, and that thou, by torments and plagues, mayest confess that he alone is God. Did you hear this? This brother just put a curse on this king. Listen to this. He said, Unto our nation that thou, by torments and plagues, mayest confess and be, and that he alone is God. So in other words, that by torment, suffering, and, and plagues, disease, that he was going to suffer, that he should suffer those things, and that he would admit that God is God alone, right? And what you may or may not know about this king is that he died a horrible death. He had a disease that the Most High gave him where his flesh and his intestines were swollen up and they were in infested with worms and parts of the flesh on his body was falling off and the smell was so bad that even his servants couldn't bear to be around him and he could even smell himself. And on top of that, he was riding in a chariot and began rushing people even more and fell out and messed up his leg. So this man died a very painful, agonizing death. But guess what? He also wrote in his will an apology to the Jews. So this brother's curse fell upon this king and it went down that way. Let's go to verse 38. And that in me and my brethren, the wrath of the Almighty, which is justly brought upon our nation, may cease. Then the king, being in a rage, handed him worse than all the rest, and took it grievously that he was mocked. Verse 40. So this man died undefiled, put his whole trust in the Lord. Last of all, after all the sons, the mother died. Let this be enough now to have spoken concerning the idolatrous feast and the extreme tortures. Wow. This family, this mother, these seven sons. If this doesn't motivate people or encourage people to endure to the end, to learn these laws, these statutes and these commandments, then, then you're doomed. Because without this, without these law, statutes, and commandments, without this commitment to the Most High, we cannot make it into the kingdom. So, as for my house, we're going to serve the Most High. This is your brother Manatazak from Nation of Kings and Priests. Shalom.